Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you guys all had a really awesome Thanksgiving and I got a, lots of turkey. Um, thank you for joining us today on another um, Condo Insider. Today, we have with us Bank of Hawaii's Finance and Leasing Programs. We have with us today Randy Al and Eric Fairfax, both with um, Vice Presidents, Presidents with Bank of Hawaii. So they're going to talk about financing and also their lease program that might be really beneficial to a lot of condos that are looking um, to finance um, some upcoming projects. So I know a lot of the condos are aging and um, they're doing pipe repairs and replacements. And um, I mean, I know that's one of the big ticket in addition to a lot of the other normal maintenance and repair stuff that we have to do. Um, so we wanted to bring them on board give us a little insights as to some of the programs that they have available that can help condos and also the qualifications for condos in order to meet some of these guidelines, um, in order to um, guidelines as far as what Bank of Hawaii requires. So I'm gonna um, introduce, um, we have Randy and then we have um, Eric. Thank you guys for being here today. Thank you very much for having us, Raylene. Um, my name is Eric Fairfax and presenting with me today as Raylene mentioned is Randy Yao. And together, we're part of a team at Bank of Hawaii that specializes in loans and leases to condominium associations. Today, we'll be discussing how associations can pay for their projects. Let's get started. For any type of association expense, regardless of the size, there are three ways an association can pay for that project. The first way to pay for a project is through the use of the association's cash reserve. This is the most basic and preferred method and the method people are most familiar with. For example, if an association knows its buildings will need to be repainted in 10 years, it would start assessing and reserving for the project so that in 10 years, it has funds set aside to complete the project. Unfortunately, and quite commonly, as really mentioned, associations either don't reserve adequately or encounter unexpected projects. For example, very few associations had put aside reserves for repiping parts, or had even considered energy savings projects like photovoltaic systems. If an association does have adequate cash reserves to pay for its project, it can either special assess individual unit owners, or it can obtain financing via a loan or a lease. In the case of a special assessment, individual unit owners must come up with their share of the project cost. For example, if the association is purchasing a photovoltaic system for 1 million and there are 100 owners, each owner would need to come up with around $10,000. Individual owners could use their personal cash reserves or obtain personal finance. In the case of a loan or a lease, our third option, the association applies for finance. Moving ahead to our next slide, please. So why do associations choose to finance instead of special assess? The biggest reason is because it lessens the initial impact on individual unit owners. We know there are many unit owners who are on fixed incomes or might be retired. And it may be difficult for those owners to come up with a large special assessment. The loan or lease spreads the cost over the term of the facility. In the example of the $1 million photovoltaic system, instead of each owner coming up with a $10,000 special assessment, the cost could be passed on to owners in the form of $100 monthly maintenance fee increases spread over 10 years. Many people in the industry may be familiar with loans to associations. However, we also wanted to take this opportunity to share another financing option most people are less familiar with, and that is a lease. So a lease is a rental agreement for use of specific equipment. Next slide, please. Before we explain some of the advantages of a lease versus a loan, I wanted to share some examples of what types of projects can be leased. As you can see on the right side of our slide, any item on a reserve study can be financed with a loan. But as you see on the left side, only equipment that can be removed from the property can be leased. For example, the photovoltaic system we discussed earlier, or hot water systems, heat pumps, computer systems, gym equipment, Basically, any equipment that can be removed from the property may qualify as a lease. Next slide, please. There are some important differences between a lease and a loan. I'll, I'll start with a loan again. So for an association to obtain a loan, 
It typically must obtain ownership approval as required by 514B or the association's governing document. In the case of a loan, the association owns the equipment or improvements. Because the association is a nonprofit entity, it could miss out on potential tax credits relating to the equipment or improvements being purchased. And at the end of the loan, the loan is fully repaid with no balance due. For a lease, ownership approval may not be required. This can be particularly helpful if you're in an association that's large or has low owner occupancy rates, as it can be difficult in those situations to obtain ownership approval. If the equipment being financed is eligible for tax credits, the leasing company, for example, Bank of Hawaii, may be able to pass along the tax credit savings to the association in the form of reduced monthly payment. At the end of the lease, the association would purchase the equipment at fair market value from the leasing company. At this time, I'm gonna hand it over to Randy and he's gonna share an example of how leasing equipment could result in reduced monthly payment. Thanks, Eric. So let's go ahead and do an example uh, of exactly what Eric had mentioned earlier. So we're gonna continue with that same example that he provided, looking at a million dollar for a photovoltaic system. So we're gonna first talk about the loan side. So that's the right side of the column. So with the loan, as Eric mentioned, associations are all nonprofit organizations. So they wouldn't be able to take advantage of any federal or state tax credit. So with that being said, the loan, you're basically financing the entire project at a million dollars. Now, with a million dollars, so we amortize the loan for over 10 years, that monthly payment comes out to be about $10,125. So the benefit is at the end of the loan, is completely paid off. And the equipment is owned free and clear by the association. Now, this is where photovoltaic systems, solar hot water, those types of equipment sometimes have tax advantages. So in this situation with a PV system here, the bank, as the uh, lessor over here, basically, has the advantage of taking the 24.5% state tax credit. So effectively, it already immediately cost of the system from a million dollars down to 725,000. So as you can see right off the bat, that cost comes down dramatically. And what we do is we pass it along as rental savings in the monthly payment. So instead of the 10,125, it goes down to 7,000 over the same 10 year period. But here's one of the key differences. At the very end of the 10 year lease, what happens is the association has the opportunity to go ahead and buy the equipment at whatever the fair market value is at that time. So we cool. cannot find it in the lease, but what we can do is kind of give an indication of what it might be. And again, it's negotiated at the end of the 10 year lease. Let's move on to the next slide, please. So we want to just talk about uh, rating said, hey, what does it take to go ahead for an association to buy for the loan itself or the lease? And so I'm going to just list some of these key metrics that most banks look at. So number one is delinquency. So for a strong association, we want to make sure that based on the number of units, that there's at least 10% or less of unit owners that are past 30 days in terms of their maintenance fees or special assessments. And in honest, you know, and truly what we rather have is under 5%, right? Second thing we look at is the concentration in ownership. What we want to make sure is that based on the ownership base, that no owner owns more than 10% of the total amount of units in the building. If there is something that we can talk a little bit more about. The next thing we look at, we kind of take a very uh, macro look at the ownership base just to make sure that the owners itself has the ability to absorb that increase in the maintenance fees in order to make that monthly payment for the loan or the lease itself. And then the last thing we do look at is the reserve study. The reserve study, everyone knows, is taking a look at all the capital expenses that's um, expected for the building over the next 20 years. As Eric mentioned earlier, what we do is we want to make sure that the association itself has the cash in hand basically cover the immediate projects that are coming up and as well as the projects coming over the next 20 years. Let's go on to the next slide. So say we have some of these deficiencies, maybe reasons for the bank to go ahead and decline the loan. So 
but let's talk about the first one and what are some solutions to get over that. Now, say the delinquency is high for whatever reason, right? What we would recommend is looking at some of those more stale and older delinquencies. If it's truly not collectible, write it off, right? Go ahead, write that off, not collectible, even though some boards wants to keep it on. So it kind of reminds them, hey, you got to collect from so-and-so. But if it's not collectible, that's to just go ahead and keep it on. Okay. Next is to have a very active collection policy. Working with your ownership, working with your board um, association attorney and everything, making sure that you have a very robust, active collection policy that everyone knows that if you are delinquent, there are milestones to hit in order to make sure you cure that deficit. And then of course, the last one, which most boards really don't wanna do, but through 514B, the board does have the right to foreclose on very delinquent. So there's a process that is entailed with that, that the association would work with the attorney to go ahead and turn it. Now, I mentioned this earlier, one of it is the high concentration in terms of ownership. Now, whenever we see that, the reason why it's important to the banks is that if that one owner, for whatever reason, runs into financial trouble and all of a sudden unable to make the maintenance fee payment, it really can place a huge burden on the rest of the other owners that are in the building. So when we do a loan, we also take that into consideration. And what we may ask for is additional financial information about that one individual unit, just so that we make sure that we think that they will have good financial capacity to service the loan, as well as, of course, stay current with the maintenance fees. Then the third one that I want to talk about that's possible reason for definition is if the association is asking for the bank, hey, can we amortize the loan longer, right? Make that monthly payment less. And it is possible. The way we structure the loans, though, is that we structure the amortization or the repayment of that loan based on the useful life. Now, if you are asking us to do a photovoltaic system and asking us to finance this over 30 years, most banks would say no, right? Although it may last that long, we don't know for sure. And so we don't always amortize a loan to full useful life, right? We're gonna to have to put a little bit of cushion in between. So a 10 or 15 year is much more reasonable. And if you think about it, it makes sense, right? What we don't want the board to have is to be paying two loans on the same improvement, right? Because we amortized it too long. We wanna make sure that that situation doesn't occur. And then finally, I just wanna go ahead and bring up that last one, ongoing and pending litigation. So if there is litigation going on, whether it's between owners, between the board, maybe the developer is still involved. What we wanna make sure we understand is what the litigation is about. And we try to frame out what that potential financial risk that might be involved with. And so if we can get a good handle and understanding what is going on and what the risk may be, we may be able to overcome the potential litigation issue and be able to provide that loan or lease for the associations. And then with that being said, you know, those are some of the solutions for some of the key declinations that we do see. It doesn't mean no, but we try to find ways to make it work for the association. Okay, and so I have a question. Oh, go ahead. So if, you, if they do a lease and say the, um, it, your PV system, it's what, 20 years? Is the lease, would, would the lease term be about 20 years? It depends. It can be as long as up to that 20 years. Okay, so say it's 15 years and they have the option to purchase it, right? But we all kind of know that the PV system doesn't last forever, right? So would you be looking at their reserves to see if they're putting money aside to even purchase it or to even buy into another one, whichever way they're going to do it? Mm -hmm. Is that something that we take a look at as well? We could, absolutely. You bring a very good point, right? If they know at the end of that lease, whether it's 10, 15, 20 years, whatever they decide, it is a good practice to go ahead and start reserving a certain level amount that they expect what that purchase would be at the very end. So it would not be a bad practice. So even this PV system might last longer than that 10, 15 years, right, really? Right. So it makes sense for them to buy it out. Because they would still have to have money to buy it out after that term. Correct. Right? 
So they still need to put money aside in their reserves as to what they're going to do with it at the end of that term. Absolutely. You know, the other option, of course, that we've seen as well is maybe at that point in time, they may take a loan to buy it out. Period. But again, you do that, you'll end up going ahead and Right, we're going to have to get the ownership approval to go and get the loan. Yeah, and the, you know, my opinion wouldn't be that good because the PVs don't last forever. No, exactly. <laughs> and the technology is changing. You know, so um, buying an old system for me wouldn't be that great of an idea. I'd rather try to get into a newer system. Mm -hmm. But it's, I, I think the lease program is really a good viable option for a lot of um, a lot of um, buildings. Because yeah. also with the lease, you're um, paying for your usage today, um, whereas a special assessment, you're paying for it up front. And say you could be selling, you, you don't know what's going to happen in two years. You might have an opportunity to sell it, but you've already upfronted the cost via a loan, you know, so somebody else is going to benefit from what you paid for, you know. So those are the other, other plus and minuses with a loan versus a lease. Um, you know, I, I think practically um, what we've seen going back to your question about people buying it out at the end of the term and then maybe not having the money to do it, it is usually that equipment and how we set the amortization is near the end of its life. So it's usually a, a pretty small dollar amount at that point. Um, practically speaking, we, we've done a number of these. And at the end of 10 years, we're talking about TV equipment that's, that's pretty worn at that point. And so our fair market values have been something like in the range of a couple of lease payments. So it's it's not, you know, when you talk about reserving, it's not like you're necessarily having to reserve for a new PV equipment to buy it at our fair market value at the end. Mm -hmm. it's right. a pretty nominal amount. But they would have to start placing re money into reserves to eventually probably purchase a new system because they do yep. only last X amount of time, right? Yep. Yeah. Unless they want to lease again. Have you have you had some experiences where they have um some uh, association has opted to release it again or, or release a brand new system versus buying it out. You know, I, I think um, what we've seen is we've seen come, people come back and do a second lease. That's kind of been the most common when it's gotten to the end of the life. But usually that was even after they purchased the fair market value from us. So maybe it was a 10 year lease and then at around year 15, as an example, they come back um, for a new system at that time. Yeah, so I haven't seen it directly for PVs yet. Most of these PV systems still kind of in hitting that 20 year life mark, right? Uh, but we have seen it for like chiller systems, HVAC systems, solar hot water, not solar hot water, but the regular hot water system as well, where they've done it 20 years there, they come back to us and lease it again for that same equipment. I wonder how it would work because I know some people have on the high rises, they have their boilers on the top, yeah. right? And um, they've also gotten some of the energy credits as well. So that would, would that energy, um, Hawaii energy credit would be applied to the balance of the loan and offset it, the credit that they give. And I know one building got like 20 or 50, it was, it was a big dollar amount. I was like, wow, that was huge. Mm -hmm. So would that money that you get from Hawaii energy just be applied to the loan? Would you guys take that and to reduce down the loan, loan or lease or whichever one? Is that how it would work? Was that credit from Hawaii Energy, was that on an existing system or that was yeah. purchasing a new system? Um, putting in a new one because they want because it was all about energy efficient. So they were putting in a brand new system. Right. So, so in that case, um, the way it works is essentially we can factor in that tax credit in, into our pricing. And so monthly payments on a going forward for the association would be a lot less than if they didn't achieve those tax credits. Right. Wow. That's a lot of opportunities for, for condos, for boards yeah, to you know, really look at. It's a little bit of a complicated topic because a lot of people aren't familiar with what tax credits are available, but um, we, we have a pretty good um, energy renewable department within Bank of Hawaii. We sometimes go back to and ask those questions and they help us with, oh, you know, this state tax credit might be available or this, or this federal credit might be available, whatever the case might be. So if, if, if people have questions and they're just not sure, you know, we can go back and kind of figure out what kind of credits might be available that we might be able to pass along in the form of the lease. How long has Bank of Hawaii been doing this lease program? Long it, time? About 20 years. I've been here about, least, uh, you would know better than I would. Yeah, it's been here for a while. 
have our leasing department 20 plus years already. And we've been doing this for this. Wow. Because I know for some of us, we only found out about it recently, like a couple of years ago, you know, um, yeah. at, a, at one of our seminars, someone brought it up and we're like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that really piqued our curiosity and, um, and also our relationship with you guys about um, these different types of programs, financing options that are available to condos. I, I think a lot of boards are really attracted to um, the avoidance of ownership approval, particularly if it's a small amount, you know, say a few hundred thousand, but for a really large condominium, that process of going through ownership approval for a loan is just so daunting for what's, what's a relatively small amount on a per unit basis. Um, those are the ones that have really been attracted to the lease option. Yeah, helps them avoid all that leg work. It, it, yeah, it does. It does. Because even just to try to get your proxies turned in for an annual meeting is, is a chore in itself, you know. So I can understand that reasoning. Okay. Um, so when you ask about uh, the 10%, uh, one entity that owns at least um, greater or, you know, somewhere with that 10%. So are you going to be asking for um, there is that individual person's financials as well? It's possible. It is possible. What we try to understand, a lot of times it's because someone buys it for investment purposes. And so we'll try to make sure we understand what the, the logic is to have such a large ownership base. In there. And then if it is quite sizable enough, we may go ahead and ask for additional financial information on that company or on that individual, just so that we want to make sure that they're on good financial standing. In order right. to I think that practically speaking, it, we don't run into this a lot. Um, for the most part, the condominiums in Hawaii are pretty diversified in their ownership. Um, but every once in a while, we will run into that entity that owns a large, a large share of the percent of common interest. And that what if you have um, a condo that has um, some of the ownership are in um, businesses like LLCs rather than a, you know, like your standard, you know, individual person. Yeah, it's still the same um, question of just, do they own more than 10%? So okay. And there's a bunch of LLCs and they all own one out of a hundred units, let's say, or something like that. Um, this issue doesn't come up. And I think just so everybody understands it from the bank's perspective, essentially what it is, is our repayment source is people paying their maintenance fees. And when we have 100 unit owners, it's very diversified. But if, if we encounter a situation where one owner, say, owns 25% of the units, if that person's having some financial difficulty, we might have a hard time getting repaid from the association. Right? So that, that's where that, those questions come from. Great, great, great. Wow, I'm, I'm really stoked that we did this. We did this today. Because um, it's really opening, a, I think it's really going to open a lot of doors for um, financing options for condos. Um, we'll probably, once we get the actual recording, we'll probably email blast it out for everybody so that they can have an opportunity to review it um, and be, at least be knowledgeable that, you know, there's some information from Condo Insider on your lease programs and your other financing programs. Um, I really wanna thank you guys for, thank you both for being on the show today um, and presenting what Bank of Hawaii has to offer. Um, I really, really do appreciate it. I really do appreciate your support for our Hawaii Council as well that you guys have over the years. Hope we can get back, hopefully next year we can get back to in-person um, seminars that we did before because those were, it was just so much, it was just so much more fun to see everybody in person versus through a camera, you know? <laughs> Absolutely, we're looking forward to that and we miss the lunches too. So. <laughs> I know, <laughs> those are the added perk to it. <laughs> right. Thank okay. For having us, really. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, is one of the last slides your contact information? Yeah. So that's there it is. There it is. Okay. That is our team. So, yep. Anytime, any questions, whatnot. Thank you for supporting us as well, too. More than happy to share our knowledge of the association. Okay. So, everybody, thank you for joining us today. Um, we will send it out in an email blast to everybody that they know that we have it in Condo Insider. They can always refer back to it when they have the opportunity or when they have, when that opportunity arises. And again, thank you, Randy and Eric, for um, being my guest today. And um, have a safe and healthy Christmas holiday. Um, I hope we don't go into another shutdown.
<laughs> well, the, the Omicron, the first case hit today, right? In Hawaii. So, We're just talking um, about. Yeah, so I hope it doesn't, doesn't get out of control. Okay. So thank you very much. And thank you everybody for joining me. Um, and we'll see you next Thursday on another um, segment of Condo Insider. Thank you.